Welcome to my new home. I survived 30 days. Just because y'all didn't see it, don't mean I didn't do it. And if I had to give you one survival tip for being lost in the woods, carry fucking matches. They work. They'll start fires. I broke the fucking match. God damn it. Unbelievable. Oh. 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 Come on. Come on. I can't start a fire. Never underestimate the therapeutic power of music when you're in a survival situation. That's why I always bring my congas. That's a classic Algonquin ceremonial dirge. You ain't never seen nothing as cute as this baby bear. And I cut its throat while it was sleeping. And I ran, I ran with the baby bear on my back. I could hear the mama in the background. She was trying to find it. She was calling out to her cub. Ah! That's what a black bear sounds like in mourning. <laughs> Sound haunts my dreams. Baby bear bones, baby bear bones, baby bear bones, baby bear bones. I ate a bear cub, I took its skeleton and I made things out of it. I made things out of his bones. Boom! Bare bones. Bare bones. Bare bones. I'm surviving in the wild with just my bare bone essentials and my bare bone drumsticks. That baby bear tasted so good. It was like rich pot roast that my mama used to make on Sunday mornings. Just tender as the day is long. I'm so hungry right now. I wish I had another baby bear. You know, as much as I feel bad about killing that, that baby cub, if I saw another one right now sleeping on the ground, I'd club it to death with its own brother's bone. Just And then I'd have a whole other baby bear feast and I'd get a fire going and I'd roast it on a spit and you'd just pick at it, just little tender morsels of its baby bear flesh. Mmm. Mmm. I can almost taste it now. For days afterwards, I was picking pieces of baby bear gristle out of my teeth and I just spit them in my hand and then I'd ball them up, and then I'd eat them again. I was just picking off little pieces of its tender flesh, all the while looking at its face on its hide that I'd carved out its flesh from, and saying, thank you, baby bear. Thank you, baby bear. I'm sorry you had to give your life for my life, but I appreciate your sacrifice. I feel terrible about killing that baby bear. I really do. I mean, it was about as cute as any animal has ever been. If it had been, if it had been two koala bears, it wouldn't have equaled the cuteness of this one baby bear cub. And it just looked up at me with glossy eyes as it woke from its slumber to see my knife coming down on its throat. And it just spilled out, the blood spilled out of it. About six or seven feet in diameter of blood, the snow was stained with red death. 
And then I picked it up by its haunches and heaved it over my shoulder and I just ran. I could hear the mama bear. It was the bellow of mourning of the American black bear. It's a well-known sound. The Native Americans used to speak of the sound of the baby bear and the mama bear communicating in the wilds. When the mama bear goes out foraging for food and the, and the baby bear stays back in the den and it's waiting for its mama. That's what it sounds like. You don't think of a little bear. A bear, you think of a big roar, but when they're little babies, they go and the mama hears it and she's She's coming home. I'm coming. I got, a, I got a whole bunch of grub and I'm feeling like my milk is full of nutrients and I'm coming. I'm on a, we're going to sleep for a day and you can just suckle at my teats. That's why the baby bear tasted so good. It was fat from the milk of its mother. I lost my camera for a whole goddamn month you never believe the things i've done and seen because i didn't fucking film it no 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 i didn't fucking film it oh my god i forgot my camera and got lost in the woods for a month you can't believe all the things I saw, all the things I did, the struggle that I had to go through to survive, and none of it's on camera. I saw the aurora borealis from the top of a peak. Blues and greens and yellows, almost like colors of the wind, like that Pocahontas song. Green and blue, yellow and purple, pink and green and blue. You just have to look it up in the picture book because I didn't get it on film. I came upon a den of over four or 500 garter snakes all holed up for the winter. And I clubbed them with this here bare bone. Just, I had like snakes for days. I was eating them like licorice pops. Amanda, 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 I'm just Amanda, Amanda, what can I say? I found a wounded stag, and for seven days, I gained its trust, until finally, it approached me, and I splinted its leg, and then it would forage for berries, and bring them to me and we would share in the bounty. I mean, these are the kind of things that no human being's ever seen. A man befriending a deer? A man befriending a stag, a six or seven point buck. Just uh, majestic in its stature. Ethereal ghost of the forest. And I was able to commune in a way that no human can understand. And then one day, I woke up and I was cold because I realized he, he wasn't there to keep me warm. And I, I crawled out from our shelter and I saw him standing there on the precipice of a cliff. And he didn't say anything, obviously, because deer can't speak. But the way he looked at me, it said, you're okay now, Tex. You can do this. I gotta go back to the deer world now. And he just, he was gone. He was my friend. 